week for us just because of the short preparation time that we have um, with uh, the game being played on Friday night and then having a late game Saturday again. You know, we got done back, uh, you know, out of the locker room and everything a little bit earlier um, than what we did for the New Mexico State game. But still, it's one that um, short week for us. So we've really tried to tweak some things um, in preparation for Boise uh, by um, changing up our schedule a little bit. You know, today being Labor Day helps some. Uh, it gave us a chance. We went out and practiced yesterday. Uh, I say practice. We got, we did our meetings, got some preparation on Boise in just meeting in a meeting type of setting, uh, as well as, you know, uh, watching the Bethune-Cookman tape and getting that uh, studied and corrected our mistakes from that and, uh, and learning from what we did well and what we didn't do well in that game. And then moving on to this game uh, and studying Boise tape. Uh, it's going to be an interesting, uh, not only because of the time frame, but just because... Um, you know, new head coach there. Um, obviously, he brings a lot of stuff with him from Oregon, but also was there a couple years ago at Boise. So there's a lot of things that he brings with him from Boise, too, that he brings back to Boise that they've done in the past defensively for us. It's an offensive preparation. Um, they do a really nice job of coaching their defense. Um, very sound, disciplined uh, um, uh, defense, aggressive defense, do a lot of good things um, schematically with it as far as um, uh, what they do. And then offensively, you know, offensively, their quarterback's got a lot of experience. Um, he's um, a talented quarterback, uh, has the ability to really spin the ball extremely well. They got good backs, a um, couple good backs in the backfield that, that, that are outstanding players. And then they got really, really good skill at receiver. Um, and so I think they're, you know, they're going to be a big, obviously a big challenge for us uh, this weekend. Uh, because they have so much speed on their offense and defensive football team in the back end and also in the in the receivers and, and running back position. So um, again, we'll practice uh, today. We got a, we decided to go with a night practice or, or late evening practice just to kind of get used to you know being um, uh, under the lights a little bit more, but also because we're coming back two days after a game and it has to be a little bit more of an intense practice just because of the fact that. Um, we only have we have one less day of preparation, so you know we had to amp it up and move everything up a day, obviously. But by doing that, you end up putting your guys out there too early after a game, and so we've kind of split the difference by having a night a night practice day. But it won't be a real physical night practice; it'll be more of a execution of schemes practice. It's kind of a hybrid of a little bit longer Monday practice is what it ends up being. Will we'll be in spiders, and then what? But the 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 one thing about that, then we have our turnaround tomorrow morning. We're actually do what would be considered a Wednesday practice for us um, on a Tuesday, and then on a, on a Wednesday we'll do a Thursday practice. So again, just one one last day of preparation just makes it something that you have to tweak. But I really like the way we've put it together. I think it's going to be a, a little bit quirky for the guys, but I think it could really help them play to a higher level because I think we'll take a pretty fresh football team in there considering we had one less day to work. So that's kind of the game plan with what we're doing. Uh, reflecting back on, on Bethune-Cookman, again, a lot of positive things. You know, I thought our offensive line played extremely well. I thought they really got into a groove, uh, did a lot of nice things. Um, our running backs, you know, we went deeper into our well and our running backs. I wanted, I talked about getting Willie Aldridge a chance and he really, you know, stepped up and got his opportunity. Ray Flores did some really nice things uh, when he got his chances in there all of it you know was O-line uh, fullback tight end did like I said did a great job of blocking on all those things and then it was nice to see Jeremiah Ballard and Tyron Smith step up and start to contribute more uh, Walt we held Walt Don out because of um, we just didn't you know he was a little bit of a tweak we didn't want to get him out there and use him but you know we're expecting Walt to get back into the rotation now and so we feel like we're really building some Good quality, you know, numbers at our wide receiver spot. So excited about that. I was really excited about the way Zach Fryer played at tight end. Luke Soto got in there and got a touchdown block at the point of attack on our last touchdown run. So I like what he did at the tight end spot as well. So we're just building depth on our football team. And that's what last Saturday's game was all about, guys, is just building depth and getting more guys reps. And we felt like we did that in a lot of cases. Um, you know, we, we we controlled the we controlled the clock the way we want to control it. I think our defense had 18 first half snaps, which is might be, you know, that's pretty close to a to a, a all time low 
uh, for us. And then they only had 40, I think 47 total in the whole game. So anytime you keep your defense out there for only 47 snaps in a game, you got a really good chance of winning. Some of it's because of the great job they did, and some of it's because of the ball control that we used on offense in that, in that game. And so um, defensively, you know, you take out four snaps of the game, and we played really, really well. I mean, for 43 snaps, it was really good football. And for four snaps, it was. And I think we just lost our focus a little bit, let down a little bit there in the second half. Um, when we were sprinkling some of our twos and threes in, and they got some big plays on us, and and um, you know, so we just got to clean all that stuff up. But it was a good effort, got us our second win, and and now we move on to this week and the big challenge that we have here. So I'll just open it up to questions from there. Coach, uh, obviously you, you ran the balls to such an extent, probably more than you have since here. Is that just because you kind of knew it was going to work against Bethune Cookman, or is that that the offense now? I just think it got to the point that it was something that. Um, we needed to do at the time to close the game out and not show too much of, of schemes and things. You know, Brad, I didn't want to go too elaborate on any schematic things in this game. And I did think that when we threw the ball, we threw it well. You know, Gavin's completion percentage was in the 60s. And, um, and um, he also had some drops, right? If he doesn't get the drops, he's probably in the 70s with his completion percent, 70% with his completion percentage. And so we threw the ball when we needed to throw the ball. And I thought we threw it, you know, he, he threw a vertical that was just really outstanding to Tyron. And, and uh, Gavin did some nice things. And we got, you know, we ended up having uh, three touchdown passes in one game, you know, which is really good for us. So I like that part of it. We're able to, you know, throw the ball in the end zone too and do that part. So I thought it was a good balanced effort. I just think it was one of those that we said, hey, let's just take control of it, you know, on the ground and, and, and try to close it out that way. Building that confidence with that two wins under your belt, what did you say meanwhile looking for their first win? Uh, are you sensing sort of a different hunger now with your team being, obviously you guys are pretty heavy underdogs going into Friday night. Right. But is there sort of a sort of a untapped swagger that you're sensing in the locker room with these guys, especially going on the road to play a team that has a, a new coach? I hope so. I hope that this team goes into this game with a lot of confidence. I know uh, I felt like there's – I feel like we're gaining that. I really do feel like we're gaining that, and I'm hoping that we go into this game and continue to have that. Um, I hope that uh, the guys take that with them, and, I, and I, I think they will. You know, we haven't had a practice yet this week, so it's early for me to, to – normally when I have my Monday, I, we've had one practice, right, and this is a little bit different because we're practicing in the afternoon. So I haven't been around the guys this week because, you know, yesterday was a meet, just meeting. So uh, hopefully we'll take the field today and really have that look in our eye that, hey, we got a great opportunity and let's go take advantage of it. A lot is made, it seems like, of – signature wins. I don't know if that's a, a media thing and we like to talk about a lot as far as signature wins. Do they exist? And I guess if they do exist, just how important are they in building a, a program? Because one would assume you guys win this game, it would be called a, a signature win for you. Oh yeah, this would be a dramatic, dramatic uh, win for our football team to go and be such a big underdog like we are right now and, and go into Boise against a Mountain West opponent. You know, obviously all of our, you know, fans have a great affinity to 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 the Mountain West Conference, right? And what used, you know, what what used to be the WAC, and so, um, you know, to, for us to go beat a, the a top a top top team in in the Mountain West Conference on the road would be just a tremendous accomplishment. So it's a really would be a huge huge win for our program if we were able to pull it off. But we're 27 point underdogs, you know, so. Um, that's that just kind of says it all right there. But you know, we've seen people that were big underdogs this week go out and have some really good you know opportunities to win football games. So we're not going into it thinking we're a 27 point underdog. That's for sure. 27, 27 seems a little high now. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't like bait me in that. <laughs> 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 Signature wins that exist in, in the coaching world. Oh, God, this would be, about it? oh, yeah, Andy, this would be huge. It would be a huge signature win for, I mean, just for us to be able to get to the point where we can beat, you know, Boise, you know, who's, like I said, just been such a strong, strong figure in that conference and really a national figure, right? I mean, they're a national figure. We look at them, you know, that's the reputation that they have, right? And they've had it for a long time, right? They've had how many coaches leave from there and go to Power Five jobs through the last, what, 20 years, right? They've been strong for a long, long time. And so to be able to go beat them on the road would be gigantic. Yep, no doubt. Coach, you were talking about your tight ends and, uh, you know, uh, watching the perspective of the game from the field and seeing them. <laughs> 
uh, they're pretty big. Yeah. And I'm just curious, uh, are they like, are you incorporating them further down the line? Or you would think that maybe, you know, uh, a good tight end performance will open up uh, your wide receivers and probably even the running game. Yeah, you know, we're really trying to get them more and more incorporated. Obviously, they're blocking their tails off in the run game, and they're just doing a tremendous job, and they're really good at that. All three of them are. But, you know, Trent had a nice catch on the touchdown. It was really good to get a, a touchdown pass to Trent, you know, because then he made a nice catch on it. So we want to get Trent more involved and, and Zach more involved in the passing game for sure, too. And, you know, that comes with um, what people are giving us, you know, right now. Uh, if they're giving that to us, we'll take it for sure. And but the kids are qualified and capable of doing it. And this might be a game where they get more opportunities. We'll just have to see how it plays out, you know, versus the different coverages that we get. Say twenty-seven point underdog. What's the talent difference between <clears throat> you and Boise? Just in terms of how do you match up? With you know, um, obviously, I got a lot of respect for them because they are they've earned and proven what kind of football team they are, Brett. They've just done some tremendous things over the years. And when you do tremendous things like they've been able to do, you're able to recruit tremendous players. So they got as good a talent as we're going to face all year. OK, so that goes without saying the talent that they have on that football team. Uh, it will be the most talented team we see this season. And so now it's our challenge to us to see how we match up against the most talented team we'll play all, all year. And so that, that's, the, that's the matchup. And I, I can't comment on that because we have to go out and do it. You know what I mean? So, but, but that's my um, assessment of where they are with their talent level. I mean, they're deep and they're strong and they're fast and they're big, right? Um, and that's why they're a 27-point favorite, right? But uh, you know, we'll see if, if we can match up against them or not. How do you beat a team like that in, in terms of just like schematics? Like you guys take away that strip sack, rush for 300 yards last week. Is it running the football, slowing the game down, trying to make it more of a possession by possession game, or is it trying to do you know come up with big plays? How, how do you beat a team that? maybe a seemingly more talented yeah i think uh, for us to have an opportunity to win this game we got to do all of the above you know it's interesting that you say that we got to be able to control the line of scrimmage we got to play really well up front on both sides of the football and we have to take our shots and create some big plays in the passing game uh, and and so in order to, and we got to move the sticks you know so it's going to be a combination of those things so we got to play very physical we got to run the ball extremely well and we got to throw the ball down the field and make big plays and that's what that's what our game plan's going to be i mean there's not going to be a whole lot of mystery to what we're going to try to do and um, and we'll see if we can get that accomplished but i think that's our best mode of operation for us in every game that we play but what we have to do in this game is play really really well in all three segments of our of the game Coach, you talked about creating big plays this Friday. Um, ahead of the season, before the MSU game, you told uh, Steve Kaplow would test you about what fans could see, and you said that you wanted to see a more explosive team. Right. So that goes hand in hand. These first two games, you were pretty successful in that area, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I really. You know what I really like is how aggressive we are on defense. You know, I love our aggressiveness on defense. I love the way that we're attacking in all situations. And what's that? What that has led to, guys, is us to be tremendous on third down. And that's been a major improvement for us defensively is our third down defense. And I think it's because we, we're very aggressive on third down. We're mixing up the looks, and we're not afraid to bring pressure and, and, and get to the quarterback. And so that's where we've really improved. And then, of course, you know our receivers are getting better, and Gavin's getting better, and that's allowing us to be more explosive on offense. There's times where we just go out and call four or five passing plays in a row in these first couple games and just drop back and throw the ball and get some work on that stuff, too. So I like that part of it. I think that part of it's been good, and I think our I thought about that this morning, how well, because sometimes it's hard just to drop back and throw the football. You know, it's not as easy as it looks to drop back and get passing schemes out there where you're trying to throw the ball in intermediate range. You know, so sometimes it's easier to throw it deep and throw it short, but we've thrown some good intermediate routes as well as we've thrown it for a long time, you know, in the offenses I've been in, so I like that part of it as well. So you like the aggressive posture because it's very evident uh, you know, there were some penalties thrown on, on Saturday over, you know, some aggressive situations there uh, right in front of you, as a matter of fact. Um, that's just the demeanor of the kids this year, is it? Yeah, you know, I, I, I want discipline, you know, and I want control of what we're doing. You know, we had some uh, penalties that 
um, were operational penalties. You know, we did have one substitution penalty, which obviously that you don't want that, right? That's that's an issue. Uh, the the touchdown that we scored on, they had 12 guys on the field um, on one of our touchdowns. But the interesting one was the personal foul on um, on Tory. He was going over to break it up, and their offensive tackle 72 shoved him in the back all the way to the sidelines. And while he was getting shoved, he but he grazed into a a, a, a um, Bethune Cookman guy just slightly grazed into him and they threw the personal foul on us. So that was really an unusual call. So that wasn't one of those undisciplined where he was doing he was doing nothing. He was just a bystander in the incident and got and so they somehow saw him bumping and thought they couldn't see the guy behind him pushing him doing it, you know. So if you go back and look at it, it's kind of a crazy. So, you know, those are the things I don't want, the after whistle uh, penalties or the or the procedure penalties, those sort of things. Those are the things I want to clean up. You know, the aggressive play. If you start really ta taking that out of your guys, then you lose a lot from your team. So we got to clean up. Obviously, 12 penalties a game's not, you know, not good at all by any means. But there's, I'm not going to just, you know, dwell on that right now because it hasn't cost us anything to this point. This is going to be their first home game in front of more than a thousand fans and since 2019. I mean, what's how do you prepare for the, the crowd? What that yeah, you know, I don't know what the crowd is, Brett. I haven't got a They're chance. Because, to sell out. Are they? Yeah, which is what? How many do they hold? 34. Yeah, yeah. 34. What? 34. And it'll be loud. You know, it'll be loud because they haven't had, you know, haven't had. I wonder what the hell. I, I didn't know how much the stadium held because I was going to try to do my research on it. We got to be good with our mechanics of, of – um, of what we do, you know, procedure-wise, uh, as far as handling crowd noise and doing all those things, we had to work on it heavy against New Mexico State because their band was playing all the time when we were trying to uh, <laughs> <laughs> try to run our offense. I couldn't hear myself calling plays, so finally I had the officials go over and talk to their band guy and ask him if he could please stop playing while we were running our offense. But um, so we worked on it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we do need, to, in all sincerity, it's going to be you know important for us to try to get all the mechanics and crowd noise stuff worked this week, and and uh, that means our players will just have to turn up the music out there, so you guys will have oh. to wear. <laughs> 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 guys will have to wear earbuds. <laughs> do you expect to get Dion back? This week, no. So what is, no, no, Dion will not be back yet this week. He, yeah, we're expecting him back. He's, he's going to be back for New Mexico. Dion will be back for New Mexico. What about uh, Q Wadley? I know you said that he got banged up and you held him out. Yeah, don't know on his status right now. Yep, and everybody else is expected to go, you know, right now. And so Q Prince is expected to go. Oh, yeah. He, he was a last minute decision on for, just to hold him on. We made that decision on Saturday night. You know, in pregame, that he just didn't feel like he needed to, to go. You know what I mean? Again, that was one of the guys that we just decided because he practiced always. Just one of the guys we decided to hold, um, just because he didn't. You know, we didn't feel like it was the best thing to rep rep him. There was three or four guys that we did that with in the game. Coach, on the lighter side of things, do you do you mention as a coach? Do you mention to your to your team like, oh, this game's on national TV, and use that as a little bit of motivation for it? Or is it just oh yeah, no, knowledge? no, that's gigantic motivation for them. You know, it's one that, and I want to get that fine line with these guys about getting them amped up to play a game, but I sure don't want them to play tentative because it's you know such a large, it's really a large theater for us to be on, you know, to put ourselves into this type of a setting. That's the reason we agreed to play the game is because you got to obviously get the uh, recruiting exposure, right? And so that's why you want to play the game this time of the night. And so on a Friday night and, and lose a day preparation, you know, that wasn't easy for us. They lost, you know, they gained a day on us because they played two days before us, you know, so they've actually gained, they actually gained an extra day. Uh, of preparation, but uh, we decided that it was just good exposure for our program, so the kids needed to take advantage of that and enjoy the uh, enjoy the opportunity. It's fun, you know. It's really fun to be one of the only games on. I'm not sure who else is on Friday at 7:30, but uh, Mountain Time, but probably nobody else. I'm not sure how many games. It, yeah, that's it. Not much. Not much in college, I would think. Boise nationally, yeah. what's that? Boise Central. Yeah, Boise Central's playing. <laughs> uh, this year, three times you've had. First and 20 or first and 19 and are three for three on converting those. Is there just something you get in that situation? Is there something to that? It's a good point. 
all three times that we've been backed up like that, I had no concerns that we were going to get it. You know, in years past, it was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if we can recover from this, right? Something's going to happen, and it's funny. I think that's how when you start to build confidence uh, with your team, it's like all three times it wasn't we didn't bat an eye. And I thought about that earlier, too, uh, is that we just respond to adversity so much better than what we have in the past, you know? And, um, you know, we played the game real close to the vest as far as not trying to you know, Saturday not trying to do too much, too crazy, you know, and uh, the game got close for a little bit, but every time it did, we responded, right? And I like that part of it too. So I, I really like how the team is, is responding to situations through, through two games. Anything else?